is going on everyone and welcome to the 8.2 fire mage guide super pumped to be making this video i wanted to release it a little bit sooner but uh as many of you may know everything's kind of been up in the air right now we've been seeing nerfs and changes and bunch of bunch of crazy stuff happening in the last uh, last couple of weeks so i wanted to make sure this guide was up to date and not going to be irrelevant a day after i posted it so hopefully this guide is helpful it's useful um, i'm going to try to condense this as much as possible there's a lot of stuff to cover and i don't want to take up too much of you guys' time um, but just to gloss over what we're going to be touching on in the video we're going to talk about how fire is performing in the current pve climate what they feel like how has it changed since the last patch we're going to go over Azerite traits, essences, talents, rotation. We're going to do it all, guys. We're going to do it all. Uh, everything's going to be in this video, I promise. Um, if I gloss over something too quickly, you can always comment below and I'll get it, I'll get uh, an answer for you as soon as I can. Now, for this guide, I thought it would make a lot more sense to break it down into different portions. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about single target stuff first. We're going to talk about essences, traits, talents, trinkets, all that stuff for single target encounters. And then we'll briefly move over and talk about how it changes or how it differs from single target in terms of Mythic Plus or Hectic Ad Cleave or AoE type scenarios. Now, in terms of single target, let's talk about essences really quick. As you can see here, Condensed Life Force Rank 3 is going to be the highest DPS essence in terms of single target encounters, followed closely by Memory of Lucid Dreams, and then Crucible of Flame. It is worth noting that Condensed Life Force is not obtainable in Rank 3 just because it's gated behind the uh, Reliquary system in the new raid, and it's going to take a couple of weeks before we start seeing people actually using Rank 3 Condensed Life Force. So as it stands on live, Memory of Lucid Dreams Rank 3 is the highest essence you can be putting into your neck for single target encounters. Now, moving over to Azerite traits, just like last patch, you're going to be wanting to go one of two ways. You can be going the Blaster Master Meteor setup, or you can be going the Wildfire Pyroclasm setup. They're both very viable. Uh, they're within a couple hundred DPS of each other. It's just a matter of what you prefer playing with. So I personally don't play with the Wildfire Pyroclasm setup just because I feel like it's a little too clunky for me. I really enjoy the Blaster Master Meteor setup. Um, it synergizes incredibly well with Memory Lucid Dreams, and I've just had tons of fun playing with it. I highly recommend it if you haven't tried it. Um, but going back to the Azerite traits, you're going to be wanting to try and grab three of those pieces. So three pieces with Blaster Master or three pieces with Wildfire is going to net you the highest DPS result. Um, obviously, that's based on your current setup. Make sure you keep simming yourself and using top gear on raid bots to figure out what the highest setup is for you. On the same note, in terms of secondary Azerite traits, things like Undulating Tides and Firemind, and even old traits like Treacherous Covenant at the Mythic level are still performing really, really well. So if you have pieces with, let's say, a Blaster Master Treacherous Covenant and a Blaster Master Undulating Tides, those pieces are really, really strong, um, and I highly recommend keeping them. And again, using the Raid Bot's uh, option top gear uh, to sim yourself and make sure that you're actually using your best traits possible. Now, in terms of trinkets, the two that you're going to want to pick up are going to be the Leviathan's Lure and the Shiver Venom Relic from the new raid, um, both of which come from the first two bosses, those being Abyssal Commander Savara and the Blackwater Behemoth, respectively. Uh, these trinkets are performing exceptionally well in multiple scenarios, things like Mythic Plus, AoE, like Hectic Ad Cleave boss fights, and single target. They're just all around great trinkets. Uh, if you haven't had too much luck, you can still be using things like the Notorious Gladiator's Badge, which is the new um, PvP season on use intellect trinket, things like Balefire Branch as well. These trinkets are performing really, really well, and I highly recommend trying to grab them if you can. It's also worth noting that the Inscription Trinket, uh, the Highborn Compendium of Storms, the 400 eye level trinket, is incredibly strong. If you don't have luck, any luck with your trinket rolls this week, they don't sell for very much gold, and you can pick yourself up one from the Auction House. Now, of course, no guide would be complete without going over talents, but very briefly, if you're going to be playing with Blaster Master, taking Meteor is your best option. Why is that? Because Meteor actually benefits from Ignite damage. Blaster Master increases your mastery, which in turn increases your ignite damage therefore playing with meteor actually does benefit your ignite damage and synergizes incredibly well with blaster master the same connection can be made when playing with wildfire and pyroclasm both of these things increase your pyroblast damage so it just makes sense to be playing with both of them in conjunction with one another Outside of these two key differences, the standard build as it stands right now is going to be Searing Touch, Rune of Power, can flag for single target fights, and the only time you're going to want to switch these talents is when you're running for a cleave fight or a hectic ad cleave or whatever you want to call it, Mythic Plus say. Um, Flame Patch is very, very strong with the Blaster Master Meteor Lucid Dream setup. Um, this also works well with Pyroclasm, although I don't recommend playing Pyroclasm in, in Mythic Plus dungeons just because you want that AoE, you want that burst. Um, Phoenix Flames can also be opted for in, in high burst Mythic Plus scenarios, um, but generally speaking, for single target encounters and for AoE encounters, the outside talents are going to be Searing Touch, Rune of Power, Shimmer, Flame On, Frenetic Speed, and Conflag. 
All right, so now we've reached a point in the guide where you're probably wondering, all right, how do I integrate all of this stuff into my rotation? How do I go about doing the burst? Um, what's the opener like for Lucid Dreams with Blaster Master and Meteor? So, as you guys can see on screen here, I've created this infographic that's been kind of circulating in the Discord, and I apologize in advance. Uh, Keistis, thank you very much for pointing it out. Um, I did add the Intellect Potion as a pre-pot, but it is important to note here that in the Unbridled Fury Potion um, does net a higher DPS result than the Intellect Potion. The reason you'd use the Intellect Potion um, would be to just essentially have a higher Ignite tick if you're expecting a lot of adds um, for Hectic Ad Cleave fights and stuff like that. That's when you'd use the Intellect Potion, but Unbridled Fury definitely does do more DPS. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind, but regardless the opener does stay the same it's just a matter of changing your potion But as you can you can see here I pre pot at three seconds here I'm using the old intellect potion just because it's farm content and we don't really care. We're not gonna spend three grand on a potion um, So again pre pot at three seconds cast a fireball now here my fireball crits now It's important to note that if your fireball doesn't crit the rotation does alter slightly But for the sake of this explanation, we're gonna assume the fireball crits we're going to pop our Lucid Dreams and Fire Blast. Now, here is where you're going to put your Fire Blast on cooldown so you can start getting the refresh, the recharge. You're going to pop your Rune of Power and then you're going to go straight into your Combustion Rotation and just spam those Fire Blasts, uh, spam those Fire Blasts and pump out as much damage as possible. And of, of course, you want to make sure you're metering at three stacks of Blaster Master for your max Night Tick. As you guys can see here, I get a crazy opener. And that's generally how the opener's played out. So again, we'll play it back in slow motion. Just to reiterate, you're gonna pre-pot at three seconds, cast a fireball, or pre-cast a fireball. Assuming here that it crits, you're gonna pop a lucid and a fire blast. You're gonna drop a rune of power, go straight into your combustion rotation. Now, if your fireball doesn't crit, the moment that you'd want to fire blast again is when you're going into your actual combustion phase. So you'd, you'd pop lucid fire blast, drop your rune of power, pop combustion, then fire blast again, and then throw out your fire blast. And again, make sure that you're dropping your meteor at three stacks of blaster master. Now it does happen that you don't get that many procs or you feel like you're running low on fire blast charges. It's totally fine to switch to scorch and scorch weave with your fire blast charges. I, you see me doing this in this opener specifically. It's totally fine. Just make sure that when you're comfortable with how many charges you're getting, you'll start to notice the more openers you do, how many charges you're getting. And if you're running low on charges after you've used your counter spell and you, you notice that you're a one stack left, you can go ahead and switch to scorch and just weave scorch in with a fire blast to maintain your blaster master stacks. That's totally fine. And of course, when your combustion phase ends, you wanna be dropping a second rune of power to utilize the remaining cooldown on your intellect potion or unbridled fury potion. And again, like last patch, you want to be dropping another rune of power the next time your meteor comes off cooldown and dropping your meteor inside of that, that, uh, that rune of power. In terms of stats, I can't really tell you what the best stat is because it fluctuates between each individual person. But what I can tell you is that haste and versatility are really strong with the Blaster Master Meteor Lucid Dream setup. Um, but again, the best recommendation I can give you is sim yourself. Use raid bots. It is so amazing. It's so useful. There's no more downloading simulation craft. Just plug your stuff in. Um, if you guys need a little like a tutorial or a guide, I have a video on my channel you guys can check out. Um, but yeah, sim yourself. Always make sure that after you get an upgrade, you're running those, those uh, top gear options or the sim results and checking what your stats are. Um, and that's the best way generally to figure out where you're at. All right, so with all of my guides, there's always a Feely Craft portion, and this is it, guys. Where do Fire Mages stand currently in PvE? How do I what, how do I feel about them? What are my thoughts about them? Um, aside from the nerf to Lucid Dreams, the, the minor at least, um, I feel like Fire Mages are in a really good spot. It Maybe it's just me, uh, but I feel like the cooldowns line up really well with almost all the fights in, a, uh, in the Eternal Palace. Um, fire just feels really great. It's in a really great spot. I just, I'm really hoping that this next tuning patch coming before Mythic doesn't touch Fire Mages. I feel like we're just in a great spot and it's nice to see them feel as smooth as they do. Um, it feels like somewhat close to how they felt in, in Legion, uh, not to the extent that they were as powerful, but in terms of how smooth the spec feels, the Lucid Miner is just ridiculous. And I think here it's important to note as well that um, don't be scared to play around with your essences. The Miner of Lucid Dreams is what's really important. The active on use major is not 
that great it's awesome but it's not the most powerful part so don't be scared to play around with the majors the minor of lucid dreams is what's important keep that in mind um, don't be shy to like try out the iris in mythic plus uh, don't be scared to use like uh, if you have, end up getting condensed life force rank three just test it out uh, play around with it and uh, keep having fun and my general thoughts right now is that we're in a great spot and i hope my hope is that they don't get touched with this next tuning pass i think we're in a really good spot so Again, I hope this guide was useful, it's informative. I hope it remains relevant for the next little while. Um, I'm not expecting to see any significant changes to the toolkit or how fire mages are played. And again, I apologize, I don't really have any footage of me playing with wildfire and pyroclasm. It's not generally something I enjoy playing with. Um, but if you have any comments or questions or concerns or just outstanding outliers in the video that you wanna mention, feel free to comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.